Welcome back for a second in a series of MetPy Mondays focused on gathering satellite archive data for plotting in Python. In our previous MetPy Monday, we talked about logging on to the NOAA class server system and searching for data from our geostationary satellites. So we will quickly go ahead and search for our data again uh, and then order our data before downloading our data. So again, uh, if you have not yet registered, go ahead and, and register for the site and make sure you are logged in. Uh, to see if you are logged in, you will see a log out uh, icon here just below the NOAA uh, sign near the top of our web browser. So again, to search for data here, we want to go over to the left-hand column here where we have a series of, of possibilities to choose from, uh, one of which here is our search for data. And so we're going to go ahead and click search for data. Specifically for this series of MetPy Mondays, we are going to look at geostationary uh, satellite data from a synoptic meteorology standpoint. So we're going to go ahead and click on the plus sign here to open up the different possibilities from our geostationary satellite data. And specifically, we're looking for our GVAR underscore IMG data. This data we want uh, for garnering our visible infrared and water vapor satellite imagery. And so we'll go ahead and click on this link. Here we are again at our subsets, our way to subset our data and order our data. Again, for sp our spatial domain, we want to go ahead and keep it to our max area. You can click on max area just to make sure that we cover the entire extent of the globe to search for our data. We're going to search for data from April 27th of 2011. So we can see from the previous time that this is already filled in for me. If you do not have this filled in, go ahead and, and change this around to April 27th, 2011 in the format of year-month-day. Our start date and our end date will be the same because we're going to look only at a certain two hour window between 19 UTC and 2059-59 UTC for our data. Specifically here, we're looking for data over the eastern part of the CONUS. And so our coverage is going to want to be the continental United States. So go ahead and make sure you have that checkbox clicked for continental United States. Our satellite schedule, we're going to search for both routine and rapid scan operations uh, of our particular satellite. Uh, it turns out that on this day, our primary scan strategy is going to be this rapid scan operation due to the severe weather event that was happening on April 27th in the southeast United States. Finally, we want to make sure that we have selected a particular satellite or series of satellites to look at to see if that's where our data is located. For this date in 2011 and looking for GOES East data, we know that this should be the GOES 13 data, and so we can select that particular one. Once we've set up our search again, we can go ahead and click on search. And this will bring us back to where we were at the end of the previous MetPy Monday. So here is our listing of uh, our different times uh, that are available uh, for the GOES-13 satellite for the continental United States coverage. And so we can see that here in our listing of our times with the satellite G13 standing for GOES-13, the coverage being the CONUS, the continental United States. And it happens that here we are in that rapid scan operation for the satellite. We had a total of 12 hits over that two hour period, which we can see up here from this metadata. And what we want to do is we're going to need to order this data. It's not available immediately uh, here after searching. And so we're going to need to add it to our cart. And so one quick way we can add all of these variables to our cart is by clicking select page. So once we select select page, now it says that there are 10 GVAR image items in our shopping cart with that little sentence there, which is exciting, but we still have two hits left, which happen to be on a second page. So we want to go ahead and click to our second page. And now we have our two more items, which get us uh, through to uh, the end of our, our range that we were looking over. And here we're going to go ahead and just click on each individual time, since there are only two, uh, to select uh, and add to our cart. 
Once we've made all of our selections, we can go to our cart and we see that we have a total of 12 data sets within our cart. Again, we can see the, the detailed information here about uh, the data being stored by time. And because we previously set our user settings to select our output format as NetCDF, that is pre-selected for us, as well as the highest spatial resolution and all of the bands available for the data sets we have searched for. If you've not yet set your user preferences, you may want to change uh, your output format to select NetCDF data uh, so that we get it in a format that will be readily accessible in Python. Again, we have all of our selections done, and so the next thing to do is to go ahead and place our order. And so we have to click our button here in our shopping cart to go ahead and place our order. And once you place your order, now you'll have a confirmation number and hopefully an email that uh, comes into your inbox in, in just a little bit of time. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to wait for the second email to come in, signifying that your order is ready for pickup. So you may have to pause here until you get the, the email saying that you have, in fact, uh, gotten your, your data ready for delivery. And so once you have your, your data ready for delivery, you're going to receive an email from the class server indicating that your processing is complete. And once your process is complete, then you have uh, up to 36 hours to go ahead and retrieve this data from the class server system. There are a number of ways you can go about doing this and grabbing this data. The one we're going to illustrate for you today is to use the terminal window and the FTP client. If you have a separate FTP client uh, software package, uh, feel free to use that. Uh, it works just in the same way uh, as you would FTP from any other site. But specifically here, we're going to talk about how to do this from the command line. And so here uh, I have got my command prompt up and that we are going to go ahead and work through what the email tells us to do to go ahead and grab uh, at least some of this data. We're not going to grab all of this data for time considerations. But the first thing we need to do is we need to actually log on to uh, the class system. And so what we can do is we can copy and paste from our email, this FTP line. I'm going to go ahead and copy that using uh, keystrokes of copy and paste into our terminal window. And since I have FTP already installed, uh, it's allowing me to connect to that system. And so now the FTP server is asking for a username. And so what does the email tell us? It tells us to use anonymous. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste again using keystrokes to log in as the anonymous user. Now it says any password will work. Going to our email, it says use user at internet, but we can also just hit return. And so if we hit return, we will now be logged onto the system, which we can confirm by seeing our command prompt change here to FTP. Once we are on the system, then we can go ahead and download our data. But before we do that, we need to do a couple different pieces. So the next thing it tells us to do is to switch to binary mode for FTP. This is a critical piece in order for the data to come back in the format we want uh, with all the right bytes and bits in the correct way. So we want to go ahead and copy and paste again this binary, which is going to put us into a binary operation uh, between the FTP server and our computer. And next, we need to move into where our data is going to be located. And so we're going to need to change directories into a directory, which is the name of uh, our order number. So again, we can copy and paste here CD into the order number. And then FTP server will tell us that we have successfully changed into that directory. Then we're going to need to go into one more directory. And so here in our email, it's not super clear, but this 001 is another directory. So we're just going to go ahead and type in CD space 001 to get into that directory. FTP will tell us that we've made it there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab data for just one time period. And so we see we have a list of different times here. And so we're going to go ahead and grab for 2002 UTC. And so we're going to copy a portion of this file name up through band because it's going to be same for every single band. And then we're going to need to use the FTP command mget or multiple get. 
And then we're going to paste the common part of our file names and then add star.nc to go ahead and grab the netcdf files that start with the same beginning of goes 13.2011.117. So on. The 117 here is the Julian day, referring to the Julian day in the year 2011 being April the 27th. And so we can go ahead and hit enter. And we're going to have to wait for all of this data to download. And so we have to go ahead and click yes to go ahead and accept those parameters. And we'll eventually start downloading all of our data. As you're doing so, you can also see that there are file names called .meta. They contain some information about the files, uh, but is really not all that useful. And so you don't have to worry about downloading the .meta. You can if you want, but you don't have to. And so we're going to let this go and we're going to speed it up here uh, before we go ahead and gather uh, our data at the end. All right, once we have all of our data downloaded from that we desire, we can go ahead and type quit from our FTP server to go ahead and get back to our main command prompt. And so once we're back at our main command prompt, we can go ahead and list all the files that we just downloaded. So we'll go ahead and type ls space, and then I typed goes13 and hit tab to complete, uh, to autocomplete most of that, to then go ahead and list the files that we've downloaded from the server. This completes this MetPy Monday. In the next MetPy Monday, we're going to go ahead and look at what kind of data did we get back uh, from these NetCDF files and begin to explore how we then interpret and use this data to actually get out the satellite data that we desire. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.